The Chevrolet Silverado EV is one of the best DC fast charging electric vehicles today. I recently had the opportunity to charge one at a 350 kilowatt EVgo DC fast charging station from 10% to 80%. And that's what we're gonna take a look at here today. I have the full charge recording and time lapse, and then we're going to do the usual analyzing with all my charts and graphs. With that said, let's get into it. So I recently had a Chevrolet Silverado EV on loan from Chevrolet for about a week. And in that time, I was able to do my 70 mile an hour highway range test where it finished up with a whopping 441 miles. I also had the opportunity to do a couple DC fast charge recordings, once from zero to 100% and another one from 10% to 80%. And that's actually the recording we're gonna look at here today. I think 10% to 80% is an important segment of the charging curve because that's what most people are going to charge in that area if they're on a long road trip. We do the zero to 100% charge recordings to map out the full charging curve, but almost nobody actually charges their EV from zero to 100%. If you're on a long road trip, you try to run the battery down as low as you can, typically around 10% if you can is a good starting point. And then you charge it up to 80% because as we know, once the batteries get to be about 80% full, the charging rate slows down dramatically and it really isn't worth your while to stay at a DC fast charger for longer than that. So the 10 to 80% charge recording is an important one. And that's what we're gonna take a look at here today and do our full analyzing. Now the Silverado EV can accept up to 350 kilowatts and it has a massive battery pack. Uh, GM says it usable capacity is 205 kilowatt hour, but uh, we believe it's a little bit more. I think the full usable capacity is, is closer to 212 or 213 kilowatt hour. The total capacity, we don't know, but it's gotta be somewhere around 230 or even more, 240 kilowatt hour. It's massive battery, the largest battery in any electric vehicle available today. And that allows it to hold a high charge rate for a long time, which you're gonna see next. So with that said, let's first take a look at the full charge recording from 10% to 80% on a 350 kilowatt EVgo DC fast charger. State of Charge is powered by Qmerit. After I've helped you decide which electric vehicle charging equipment you're going to buy, follow the link in the description of my videos and let the EV charging installation professionals at Qmerit install it. So the charging session starts out great and within a minute, the Silverado is blazing away and charging at 346 kilowatt, just under its 350 kilowatt maximum charging rate. It goes from 10% to 20% in four and a half minutes. And then it only takes four more minutes to get to 30%. Now I'm gonna stop the video here for a minute to talk about where we're at. The Silverado added 20% of its huge battery pack in less than nine minutes, and it's still charging at 346 kilowatts. But this is where the charging rate starts to slowly lower but it doesn't fall off a cliff like I've seen with many other EVs. And this isn't thermal throttling at this point. This is the natural charging curve of the Silverado, I believe. All right, so let's start it back up again. And the Silverado hits 40% state of charge after 13 minutes of charging. And it's holding steady at 300 kilowatts. In fact, it holds right around 300 kilowatts all the way up to 50% state of charge which happens after only 18 minutes of charging. Now again, I'm gonna stop the video here at 51% state of charge because this is the point when the charge rate falls below 300 kilowatts for good. But look at what it's accomplished so far. We've added 100 kilowatt hour and 41% of the massive battery pack of the Silverado in under 19 minutes. And that's good for about 180 miles of highway driving, which in my opinion is excellent. Okay, let's start it back up again. The Silverado reaches 60% state of charge in 23 minutes, but now we're only taking in 217 kilowatt. We hit 70% state of charge nine minutes later at the 32 minute point and now the charging rate is down to 163 kilowatt. 
80% state of charge comes eight minutes later, which was actually a little faster than it took to go from 60% to 70%. And that's because the charging rate began to climb back up for a while. It actually peaked at 188 kilowatt for a bit. So I finished up the 10% to 80% charging session in 40 minutes with the charging station dispensing over 166 kilowatt hour. Now you may notice the screen says that the session ended at 79% state of charge, not 80, but that's because there's sometimes a lag between the actual state of charge on the vehicle and what the vehicle sends to the charging station. The Silverado was set to charge to 80%, and when it reached 80%, it stopped charging before it notified the charging station that it actually reached 80%. And just to be certain, I confirmed in the vehicle that it was indeed at 80% state of charge. So that was pretty impressive. Now, you might say, well, Tom, you know, charging from 10% to 80% in 40 minutes really doesn't seem that impressive to me. But if you notice at the end, it added 166 kilowatt hour in those 40 minutes. So you have to really take a look at the size of the pack before you start to say this was a good charging session or a bad charging session. Now, there's a lot of EVs out there that can go from 10% to 80% in much shorter than 40 minutes, but none of them are gonna add 166 kilowatt hour to the battery pack in 40 minutes. So in that right, the Silverado is a charging beast. You'll also notice that it held just under 350 kilowatts for about the first 10 minutes of charging, which is great. If you only need to make a quick stop to add some miles and you're only gonna stop for 10 or 12 minutes, you're getting nearly the full 350 kilowatts for that whole time. You're pumping those kilowatt hour into the pack, which is great. We also saw it hold over 300 kilowatt until the battery was about 51% charged. So from 10% to 50%, it charged at more than 300 kilowatt. Again, fantastic to be able to pump that amount of power into the battery pack in such a short period of time. Okay, well, now that we've seen the charge recording, let's take a look at the charging power chart because it's one thing to see the recording in time-lapse, but a totally different thing to see it on paper so you could map out the whole charging curve. So let's take a look at that next. All right, so you can see here in less than a minute after plugging in, the Silverado was already charging just under its maximum charging rate of 350 kilowatt. And it held that rate for a little over nine minutes to the point when the vehicle was at 32% state of charge. It then made this quick drop down to 300 kilowatt. And it held that again for a little over nine minutes to the point when the Silverado reached 51% state of charge. It then started a gradual decline before this rapid drop here, all the way down to 138 kilowatt. But that was really brief because it quickly recovered and gradually increased back up to 188 kilowatt when the state of charge was at 76%. And that's when it started the final descent down to about 132 kilowatt when the charging session ended and the vehicle was at 80% state of charge. Overall, it's really not a bad charging curve, especially when you consider how long it held over 300 kilowatt. Now imagine how much better it would be if we didn't have this massive drop here and was able to capture all the power in this section here. Now while it might look like thermal throttling happened here because it rapidly dropped so low and then recovered and actually increased the charging rate, but I actually believe this is most likely the program charging curve of the Silverado, and there wasn't any thermal issues in this charging session. I'll explain more why I believe that in the next Silverado charging video that I put out with the full zero to 100% charging session. And next up, let's take a look at the time to charge charts. In these charts, we're gonna see how long it took to add a certain amount of miles. We're also gonna see how many miles per minute in 10 minute sections of charging are added to the Silverado's battery. That's a very useful metric there. If you're on a long road trip and you know, well, I have to go a certain amount of miles, so how long do I have to stop and charge? These charts help you in that regard. So in that respect, they're actually much more valuable than the charging power chart. So let's take a look at those next. Okay, so this is the time to charge chart, where the charging time is in minutes on the y-axis 
and the state of charge percentage is on the x-axis. You can see I started at 10% state of charge and ended at 80% in a little over 40 minutes. During the first 20 minutes, the charging line has a more vertical climb because the vehicle was adding charge at a higher rate than in the second 20 minutes. And that becomes more visually apparent when I add these miles per minute guidelines. You could see the charging line is parallel with the first 10 miles per minute line for almost the first 20 minutes of the charging session. And in the last 10 minutes of the session, the charging line is parallel to the five mile per minute guideline. So let's take a look at how many miles per minute were added in each 10 minute section of the charging session. Okay, so you can say I have two columns here for the EPA rated range, which is 440 miles for the Silverado EV, and then my 70 mile an hour highway range test, which I finished up with 441 and a half miles. So the numbers are so close, I displayed them here, but I'm only going to read the EPA range rating. Typically, the numbers aren't this close, the EPA range rating and my highway range test, so I read both numbers. But I put them up there for you to see, but let's just look at the EPA rated range because it's so close. For the first 10 minutes of charging, we average 10.2 miles of range added for every minute of charging. That's excellent. When you get up over 10 miles of range per minute, that's actually excellent. The second 10 minutes, little start to slope a little bit from 10 to 20 minutes of this charging session, we average 9.2 miles for every minute of charging, which again is still excellent. Now things slow up. Once we got past the uh, 20 minute mark, we're down to 5.7 miles of range added per minute. Believe it or not, that's still not bad when I compare it to other electric vehicles after 20 minutes of charging. And um, from 30 to 40 minutes, it slows up even more. And we get down to 5.2 miles of range added for every minute. But as you can see here, the second half of the charging session was nearly half the rate of the first 20 minutes of charging. So it goes to show you how charging rates for all electric vehicles slow down as the state of charge get higher. Some EVs do better than others, but all electric vehicles, once you start getting to a higher state of charge, the charging rate slows up dramatically. And that's why we always tell people, don't stay at a charging station longer than what you have to and never charge a DC fast charger past 80 or 85% unless you absolutely need that extra range to get to your destination. Next up, let's see how quickly the Silverado adds back driving range. Because after all, that's really the most important thing when you're on a road trip. How long do you have to charge to either get to your destination or to the next charging stop? So let's take a look at that now in 50 mile increments. Okay, so again, we're going to focus on the EPA rated range because these numbers are just so close, it's not worth reading both. It took me 4.6 minutes to add 50 miles of driving range. 9.3 minutes to add 100 miles. That's great. You can add 100 miles in under 10 minutes. That's a great charging session. If you just need that extra range, a quick stop, by the time you maybe plug the vehicle in, walk inside to whatever stores there, get a cup of coffee and walk back out, you got 100 miles of range. That's great. 14.7 minutes to add 150 miles. So 15 minutes stop nets you 150 miles. 20 minutes, you can add 200 miles. It takes a little over 28 minutes to add 250 miles of driving range. And then it takes under 40 minutes, 38.5 minutes, to add 300 miles of driving range. Many electric vehicles won't even go 300 miles on a charge, particularly on the highway. But with the Silverado EV, less than a 40 minute stop. As long as you plug in at a very low state of charge, you can add 300 real miles of driving range. Okay, and finally, if you haven't heard enough data on the Silverado's charging, then this last chart is definitely going to fill you up. Now, this is my master charging chart. In this chart, we have on the y-axis the starting state of charge, and on the x-axis the final state of charge. And these boxes represent 10% state of charge. So if you look at the first active column, that's a starting point of 10%. So when you go from 10% to 20%, then the next box is 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, 
to 30%, then 10% to 40%, and so forth. And then you can even look further down the chart at the other columns. You can start at 30% and go to 40%, or 30% and go to 50%. And each box has a number of data points for that specific section of the charging session. Each box shows the time it took to charge for that section. It shows what percent state of charge was added in 10% increments. And it shows the added range according to EPA range rating. The average power, which is the average kilowatt draw during that specific section of this session, and also the amount of kilowatt hour added during that section. Now, I'm not going to go through all these boxes here. What I am going to look at is the box on the lower left-hand corner, because that final box in the corner there represents the entire charging session because I started at 10% and I finished at 80%. You could see there it took 41 minutes. We added 70% of the battery, which was 308 miles of range. The average amount of power we took in during this whole session was 249 kilowatt. That's really amazing. We averaged 249 kilowatt from 10% all the way up to 80%. That's a great average power draw and better than a 1C charging rate. I think this is a valuable chart because you could look up your starting state of charge point and see how long you need to charge to add a certain percentage of state of charge or driving miles. I will note that the battery needs to be at the proper temperature to achieve these results, but the Silverado does have battery conditioning. So make sure you either turn that on manually at least 30 minutes before arriving at the DC fast charging station or enter the charging station as a destination in your navigation system which will automatically turn on battery conditioning in the Silverado. I know people are going to want to have this chart handy on road trips so I'm going to make it downloadable on my new EV charging website which you can find at evchargingstations.com. All right so what do you think? I'm pretty impressed with the Silverado EV so far. And this isn't the only DC fast charging video you're gonna get on the Silverado. I've also recently completed a zero to 100% charge recording to map out the whole charging curve. And in a week or two, I'm gonna post that video. And then I'm also going to compare it to the 10 to 80% charging session that we did here today. I'll put them both on the same chart so we could see if there's any similarities, if it's a consistent charging curve, which is important to me. I like when EVs offer consistent charging curves. When uh, General Motors first came out with the Ultium platform with the Hummer EV, I did a whole bunch of charging sessions and it was all over the map, but it seems like GM has the software down pat now and we're getting repeated charging sessions and a consistent curve that doesn't appear to have any thermal events, at least in the two sessions that I did, which is really good. I figured that they would get this put together. I, I think they kind of rushed the Hummer to market uh, and the, the charging software just wasn't ready yet. And I'm not the only one that said that. A lot of people said it's just all over the map, tons of thermal derating and so forth, but it doesn't seem to be a problem with the Silverado EV. And I mean, you know, we added 150 miles of driving range in, uh, was it under 15 minutes? We added 250 miles of driving range in under 30 minutes. And uh, that's really all you can ask for, for a big four and a half ton brick driving down the road to be able to add that much range that quickly. It's a good sign. And I think uh, Silverado EV owners are gonna be really happy with it. I wish my Lightning charged this well. Uh, you know, it doesn't charge nearly as well. And uh, I seem to manage fine whenever I go on road trips. So Silverado is gonna do pretty well with uh, road trips. Well, that's all I have here today. Um, as I said, I'm gonna have another video coming out pretty soon with the full charging curve and we'll do some comparisons. But um, hey, color me impressed. The Silverado EV charges exceptionally as far as I'm concerned. And uh, GM needs uh, to get some props for putting together a, a very good charging system with the Silverado EV. Now I know the battery is huge and that helps, uh, but we did average more than a 1C charging rate for 10 to 80% session. I probably won't for the full zero to 100, but we'll see uh, once I put that all down on paper. But um, you know, the uh, Silverado EV adds back miles uh, like a champ. And uh, 
Silverado owners are going to be happy with that when they get on the road and uh, start towing and doing all that truck stuff where you need to uh, add back range as quickly as possible. So listen, if this is your first time here at State of Charge, please hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.